What's up guys? We have got another NECA figure on deck today. We're taking a look at the ultimate gizmo figure. This is a line that again, uh, I've never really gotten into, but I couldn't pass up ultimate gizmo here. I mean, Gremlins is among some of my favorite movies, so I have a huge love for this movie and this character. And it's finally time to take the plunge and look at this little guy. So he's in standard ultimate style packaging. So we've got a flip cover style package here. You can see the Gremlins uh, kind of poster movie artwork on the front. We've got the logo on the side. The back of the box has a bunch of product shots of Giz and then you can open this guy up and we've got the figure there in the window and then we've got a product shot of Gizmo all decked out on the side there. So let's pull him out and take a look. And here he is out of the packaging, everyone's favorite little Mogwai, Gizmo. And after watching this review, if you want to snag one for yourself, I'll put a link down below. Uh, check out BigBadToyStore.com. They, of course, will have this guy in stock. You can check him out for yourself. So we are going to take a look at everything this little guy comes with. Being a NECA Ultimate release, he does have a whole mess of accessories. But, of course, we have to start with articulation and see how this little guy moves around. And he moves around in an interesting way. He doesn't have tons of articulation, but he has enough to give him some life, give him some character, and he does have some very unique articulation as well. Certain points that I was completely unaware moved until I got him out of the box. And uh, there's some, some weird and some really cool in that particular point. So let's start at the head. You can swivel the head, it's on a ball, so it has a lot of motion. You can go up, down, bobble side to side, and all the way around. The ears are articulated, so you can move them around, you can rotate them, and then they do have a little you know, forward and backwards to them. The arms go out, they rotate, they have a, sort of an elbow joint there. It's more of a swivel than anything else, and then the hands are on ball pegs as well. My left hand is pretty loose compared to the right. It's not a huge deal, but it's worth noting. And then uh, he does have leg articulation, but it's mostly just swivel. I mean, the, the sculpt right there. I mean, there are tree trunks in his, uh, in his uh, hips there, so he really can't do a lot. He kind of just you know shimmies his legs back and forth anyway. So it's not a huge deal, and I don't think you're going to need to put Gizmo in any kind of running poses. So he has some articulation, and he is more than poseable. Don't get me wrong, but there is one area where things are a little different. And I'm telling you, it's just, it's just really interesting. So he has movable eyes and there is a little trackball on the back of his head that you can move them around with. Uh, it's kind of odd, you know, they kind of they kind of move sort of together, but sometimes they move a little independent of each other. So you just got to kind of work it to get it going. Then you can see that, you know, his eyes are, eyes are going to follow you depending on how you want to do it. So you can really give him some expressive looks with this. And it's, it's pretty easy to use. I mean, if you're familiar with a trackball of any kind, you know, trackball mouse or an old trackball on an arcade game, uh, it's the same situation. It just kind of moves around left and right, up and down, and then you can roll them all the way around. You can kind of hear it moving back there. I think it's really cool. If you hit it, if you kind of put him down hard enough, it might jostle them. They might move a little unexpectedly, but they stay in place pretty well. And just to show you, this is the, the horror scene of what it looks like underneath. So you can kind of see those eyes. They do have a wide range of motion. So I think that's really cool. And again, you know, I had no idea it did this until I got it out of the box. And it was quite the surprise to be able to play around with something like this. Um, I'm very much a fan of this. And I think it's a very, very cool addition to this figure. Now, as far as the sculpt and the paint on this guy, it's pretty standard neck affair. I think they've absolutely nailed the look of this figure, and paint is pretty solid. I don't really have any issues with it. I do have a little slop here and there, but nothing too crazy. Uh, for the most part, he's just brown and white with some tan. And then, of course, we've got the, the various paint applications on his face to actually bring out the skin tones that are underneath his fur. Uh, but but the, the hair is, is pretty well painted, and I don't have too many gripes there. Fingernails are painted nicely. Everything has texture. Everything has little bits of detail here and there. You can see the veins sculpted into his ears, the hair coming out of them, and it's, you know, it's a little asymmetrical there, so it's not exactly the same on both sides. The face, I mean, it just looks exactly like Gizmo, and that's really what you want. You want it to look like the thing it's supposed to look like, and NECA did a fantastic job doing that. Uh, it looks like he jumped right out of the screen as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, a little bit of uh, paint slop here and there, nothing too crazy, but as far as the sculpt goes, it's on point. I think they did a really good job to hide the fact that the eyes are recessed in there as well in the sculpt and how they've kind of made the line work work with the face plates that pop off. So it's all in all a very accurate sculpt and the paintwork is pretty solid too. It looks like Gizmo. What more could you really want? 
Now, as far as accessories goes, being a NECA Ultimate release, this guy comes with pretty much everything that they could throw against the wall. And he comes with a lot of stuff. We've got three extra faces. We've got the candy cane. We've got the trumpet. We've got the rope belt. We have got the pencil arrow. We've got the paper clip bow. And then we've got the Santa hat. So he's got a whole bunch of stuff. You know, we've got the Santa hat here. Let's just start with this. Uh, it sits on his head pretty much in one specific way, kind of like this. Fits on him perfectly. Uh, I mean, it just sits on him, but it's, it's nicely done. It's sculpted well. A lot of texture to it. Nice paint apps. Don't have any real issues with it. We have got the paper clip bow. It's kind of flexible and pliable. He can't really hold it, though. Uh, it's not really meant for that. It's basically meant to be around his arm, so you can kind of, like, sling it around his arm here and, you know, kind of rest it on his uh, on his shoulder and against his body to make it look like he's, uh, you know, kind of holstered it or something. Kind of like that. And then we've got... Um, the flaming arrow. This is an interesting one. And it, this is the one that made me realize that he really can't hold anything. He doesn't really have a grip, even though the packaging shows him kind of holding both the trumpet and the pencil. The trumpet is out of frame, so it looks like it's basically just sitting on the ground like that. It's sculpted well enough. You know, it looks fine. And if that that's a pretty good pose, all things considered. So I'm not really too upset about that. Uh, I'm not upset about this either. It's just more of a point of contention. So we got this, the flaming arrow. So we got the bottle with the rag that's coming out of it. And then the arrow shaft is the pencil. And this is sculpted really, really nicely. Nice paint apps on the end and the eraser. But he can't hold this thing either. And even the packaging in the box has putty on the underside of this, which is sitting against his right hand. You can see there's putty in the picture there. So it's just kind of leaning up against it. He's not actually holding it. It's basically leaning in his hand and then it's secured there. So that's kind of a bummer. I was hoping he could hold it. I thought there was enough grip there, but there really isn't. His hands are just, you know, kind of relaxed open. We've got the rope belt that he uses. You know, he uses the paper clip and he uses the pencil and then he uses the uh, rope belt when he becomes Gizmo Rambo. So we've got the rope belt. He comes with this on him in the package and you just kind of slide him in there and shimmy it on. Uh, you could untie it, I suppose, but there's no reason to. It comes off and on just fine. And then we got the candy cane. So again, he can kind of hold this because it's got the hook. Uh, so it's just a candy cane. Surprisingly enough, the paint apps are a little smudged on this one for something pretty simple. This one has the mist on it, but it's just a candy cane. And then we've got the extra faces. So I showed you that you pop these uh, face plates off. And now that I want to do it, there we go. It was giving me some trouble. So we got extra ones here and then you just pop them on. So, you know, we've got the, uh, the sad gizmo, which that is just too adorable. So we've got him, you know, with the frown and the eyes are more open on this one, stuff like that. We've got the the uh, the happy one where his eyes are a little more shut and that kind of creepy gizmo smile. And then we've got arguably the best one, the uh, the Rambo head. So he's got uh, the bandana, which is a part of this, which is something that kind of has to sit over top of the head. You just got to kind of position it correctly. And then, uh, you know, you might have to move it down a little bit, give it a little give it a little pressure to make it uh, sit on his head correctly, but then his eyes are squinted and you can, you know, make him look kind of really angry and look like a, like he's about to throw down with the spider gremlin. So I really like this. I'm going to do as best I can to recreate the, uh, the, the Rambo scene with my stuff. So he comes with a ton of stuff, obviously a bunch of different accessories. Paint apps are, are pretty solid across the board. I do have that one little issue on this guy, but I love everything they included. I just wish that in general he could hold stuff better and that I don't have to rely on third-party items, you know, putty, stuff like that, to make it just sort of look like he's holding it. I'd rather him be able to just do it on his own. But at the end of the day, what are you going to do? I'm not going to complain too much. It's just something to point out. So at the end of the day, despite my little gripes about the accessories, I am very much satisfied here. He comes with a ton of stuff. The accessories on their own are fantastic. The figure looks good. The paint is good. The sculpt is definitely good. And you cannot go wrong with that eye feature. Everything about that is fantastic. It is a little frustrating to get it working initially, but you quickly get the hang of it. And then it just adds a whole other layer to this figure. I think NECA has done a great job here. And for the price, for all the stuff we're getting, it's pretty much a steal. It's a must have whether you're a Gremlins fan or not. So that's going to do it for this look at the NECA Toys Ultimate Gizmo figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.